When you take a look at the Mercedes-Benz GLE's history and lineage, it has been a staple of the lineup for well over 20 years. And it was one of the first SUVs to go head-to-head -head with the BMW X5. And that rivalry still lives on today in 2023. However, both brands have kind of taken a different approach to this segment, where the Mercedes-Benz GLE is primarily focusing on being luxurious, upscale, refined, higher quality, and sophisticated, and with that comes a more expensive price tag. However, your money's going a lot further with the GLE because you do have some of those creature comforts that you're not going to find in some competitors in this price range. Now, I'm sitting next to the 2024 model, so there has been a cosmetic refresh for the exterior and interior, but also this model year has been electrified. So for the GLE 350, we have a 48 volt mild hybrid system, but also we have the 450E plug-in hybrid. So as you can tell, Mercedes-Benz is starting to go more in the electric direction. And in this video, I want to go over everything about the 2024 GLE. Take a look at the exterior the interior, take it out for a test drive, and also see why if you are looking at buying an SUV in this price range and segment at around seventy dollars to $80,000, then maybe taking a look at the Mercedes-Benz GLE might be a great decision. Now, before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington in Burlington, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Mercedes-Benz inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Conventional wisdom would suggest that within a luxury brand's lineup, a mid-sized SUV's popularity would pale in comparison to its more affordable siblings, such as the GLC. But for Mercedes-Benz, the GLE has remained as a beloved vehicle in this market, and for this German manufacturer. Some could claim that nothing needed to be changed up for 2024. However, mechanical and technological improvements have once again reinforced the GLE's position within this class. And despite only being a mid-cycle refresh, this SUV is primed and ready to be competitive amongst its closest rivals. Starting off with pricing, the GLE 350 comes in with a base cost of just over $62,500. But as you can quickly tell, this model is well equipped, and in fact, has close to $20,000 worth of additional features and packages. Because Mercedes goes the extra mile in regards to offering premium luxury qualities and characteristics, even for a GLE with a base powertrain, you feel as though you're receiving something special rather than purchasing an upsized compact crossover. Compared to a GLC, the GLE is about 8 inches longer and about 5 inches wider, making this mid-sized SUV accommodating and practical for larger families. Another distinguishing factor with the GLE is that unlike the BMW X5 and other closer rivals, this SUV is not underpinned by a platform that's directly related to the sedan its alphanumeric badge is based on, which does play a significant role in how this SUV performs compared to others in this segment. And as we're going to find out, might be the best option for those looking to upsize. While not as noteworthy initially, you'll have a ground clearance of around 8 inches, but this will be an important metric for 2024, as Mercedes-Benz begins beefing up its versatility and utility. However, the main headline for this refreshed model is the updated road presence, and thanks to the $3,150 AMG line package, this GLE certainly stands out compared to last year. First off, you have the full paint finish around the wheel arches, AMG body styling, and the AMG star pattern grille, all of which add some aggression to the front fascia. Being loosely based on the E-Class in terms of styling, the headlights have been remolded to mimic the mid-size sedan, and further incorporating classier undertones, the $400 night package adds a gloss black splitter and trim around the grille. Because we have the pinnacle trim, you'll have the upgraded LED intelligent light system to provide the optimal amount of visibility during adverse weather conditions or on dimly lit back roads. Moving over to the side profile, this GLE is sitting on 20-inch AMG twin 5-spoke alloy wheels with some black accents to further add to the color contrast. Even with the larger tire size, 
ride quality is still impressive, as the suspension is tuned primarily for comfort, and buyers should love its classier on-road demeanor. As part of the night package, you receive gloss black side mirror caps to match the window trim and roof reels. And as we begin making our way around the back, you'll have a gloss black rear diffuser for a sportier look. Just like we saw for the front fascia, there has been a slight cosmetic enhancement with reshaped LED taillights. Since the GLE maintained its squared off body lines, Mercedes didn't do too much aesthetically where this SUV appears to be all new. However, we do believe that it's a must to opt for the AMG line package, as the aggressive design makes this GLE look sleek. Under the hood, the GLE 350 is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a 9-speed automatic transmission. As mentioned during the beginning of this review, a 48-volt mild hybrid system has been added to aid not only in performance, but also efficiency and adding smoothness to the auto start-stop system. In fact, its role has been understated, and we'll discuss that in further detail during the test drive. While not remarkably noticeable, current GLE buyers will feel the difference during heavier accelerations, but there's a heightened sense of refinement for the 2024 model that really fits the brand identity that the GLE is trying to portray. With Mercedes-Benz's 4MATIC all-wheel drive system, this SUV will have no trouble tackling winter road conditions. And despite being engineered for on-road use, Mercedes is doubling down on the versatility with a key feature that will be found on the head unit. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 20 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway which is a marginal increase compared to last year. Stepping inside, you're greeted by a similar interior to last year, since the GLE hasn't changed platforms or moved on to a new generation. However, the features and amenities that you can equip on your 350 is really going to elevate the ownership experience of this SUV. First off, we have power adjustable, heated, ventilated, and massaging leather seats with memory functionality for both the driver and front passenger. If that wasn't enough, you also have heated armrests to enhance the year-round comfort even more. And the dashboard has soft-touch MBTEX leatherette materials, making the cabin feel upscale and fitting for the price point. In front of you, a refreshed full digital gauge cluster, which can be found in other new Mercedes-Benz products as well, puts the GLE more in line with the Audi Q7 from a technology perspective, as you can fully customize this display by using the touchpad and haptic feedback buttons mounted on the steering wheel. From this screen, you can also access the settings for your head-up display. It's very easy to read, with a variety of layouts, including turn-by-turn -turn navigation when route guidance is activated. While competitors offer similar functions, Mercedes is bordering on cutting-edge resolution that others haven't yet replicated. Then moving over to the infotainment system, this is Mercedes-Benz's second-generation user experience, with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation. And since this model is the pinnacle trim, augmented reality propels you into the 21st century, and the Burma surround sound system amplifies the audio of your favorite music. Many of the menus and features you are accustomed to carry over to the 2024 model, including seat kinetics and ambient lighting. But more importantly, you still have the touchpad and quick access buttons if you prefer not reaching for the screen. Surprising and becoming rarer to see in this market, you still have physical buttons for the climate control settings, rather than being forced to scroll through the head unit and spend unnecessary time adjusting the temperature to your liking. But one new tech feature that ties into your surround view camera and activates when putting the GLE in off-road mode is the trail cam, where you can see what's directly beneath this SUV when traversing over terrain. This is further enhanced by the wide range of angles you can select when parking the GLE on city streets to ensure you don't get yourself into trouble when parking in tight spots. Returning to the center console, 
Tucked away is a wireless phone charging pad with two USB-C inputs and a 12 volt outlet. And if that wasn't enough, you also have heated and cooled cup holders to keep your beverages at a desired temperature. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic moonroof, which lets in a lot of natural light to the interior. Now moving on to the second row, we're going to start off on the passenger side. And one thing to really point out here about the GLE is that it's one of the most spacious SUVs for second row occupants in this segment with 41 inches of legroom. And to put that into perspective, that outclasses the BMW X5 by around three inches. So the GLE is going to be a bit more family friendly and conducive if you do have taller passengers sitting in the second row at all times. Now, this seat has been adjusted all the way back. It's not necessarily on a recline, but I have plenty of legroom here. Now, even though I'm not the tallest person out there, I'm around 5'5", five five, I do think that if you're on the height of maybe 5'8", five 5'9", five possibly 5'10", you won't be feeling claustrophobic in this vehicle at all. And this is one of the reasons why I would recommend that if you are looking for something a bit more practical compared to say a GLC, take a look at the GLE. This is really what you want to go with. Now, when it comes to headroom, you do have a higher roof line, even with the massive panoramic moonroof. So I don't think people have to worry about hitting their head on the headliner. Also, these second row seats are a little lower to the ground to maximize that headroom. Now let's take a look at the center seat. You are going to have some good placements for your feet. The center hump is somewhat aggressive and a bit wider, taking away some of that legroom. However, because the GLE is rather wide, you have plenty of shoulder room, and I do think you can have that third person sitting in the second row at all times. And that right there is why I think it's a better value over the GLC. But of course, the GLE, I think, is more geared towards a different type of consumer. Then taking a look at the driver's side, the seat is adjusted as someone of my height, around 5'5". And I have a copious amounts of legroom here where I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. Also, there's some amenities for the second row that I think will go a long way if this vehicle is going to be your primary family vehicle. So you do have rear air vents on the B pillars, giving you some of that extra airflow to go along with the air vents for the center console. Also have heated outboard seats and also dual zone climate control back here. So on a hot day like today where I'm sweating profusely and it feels like I'm in Florida, I can sit back here, cool off, and really just enjoy a longer drive on a road trip. Also back here, you have two USB-C inputs and rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 33 cubic feet of room to work with, which is identical to the BMW X5. Now, as you can tell, this cargo area is rather wide, also with the higher roof line, you can fit a lot of items back here. I was easily able to fit on my camera gear, so it's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box and a tripod, and could have thrown in a lot of bags of luggage if I was going on a road trip with the family. Now, one thing to point out here about the GLE is that it comes in with only two rows, where some rivals such as the Volvo XC90 and Infiniti QX60 are gonna have three rows available, where I do think that for SUVs of this size, the third row, in most cases, is pretty much useless. So if you are somebody that is looking for something a bit more family friendly, you might want to go with the GLS, especially at this price range. But with the GLE, you're getting an SUV that I think is sized perfectly and is certainly more practical than the GLC and GLB. Then with the second row seats fold, you're looking at right around 74 cubic feet of room outclassing the BMW X5. So from an overall practicality standpoint, the GLE is really the better option to go with if that is a top priority. Then on the left side of the rear cargo area, you will have some netting for some smaller items such as car detail equipment, water bottles, or maybe even a first aid kit. Then beneath the floor mat, you are going to find a spare tire. So if you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. Equipped on our GLE, we do have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. 
All right, so let's take the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 out for a test ride to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to last year and also other vehicles in this segment and market. Mercedes-Benz has been a bit hush-hush about the driving dynamics for 2024, and a lot of it is because this is the exact same generation as last year, so there's not gonna be too much of a difference when it comes to the driving dynamics. However, I wanna see if the 48 volt mild hybrid system changes up the accelerations, and also Mercedes-Benz did retune this nine-speed automatic transmission, just like we saw with the GLC. So I wanna see how that all plays out for 2024. Now we're currently starting off in comfort mode because that's what this vehicle is really designed for. If you're looking for performance and you're looking for aggressiveness behind the wheel, you'd probably go with the 450 at the very least, or maybe even the 53. But with the 350, it's all about luxury. It's all about class and sophistication. And really, you truly feel that when you are behind the wheel. This is one of the more quieter cabins in this segment where you're really not hearing any of the outside world at all. You have a lot of nice interior insulation, but also I find these seats to be very supportive and aggressive when it comes to the bolstering. So I feel very secure behind the wheel. Also with the GLE, this feels more like a traditional SUV. And I have noticed that Mercedes-Benz is trying to steer away from being a brand that considers their SUVs crossovers. But when it comes to the seating position, you do sit pretty high up in this vehicle like you would with a typical SUV. Now, since we are at a red light, might as well go over the interior layout once again. Also, of course, check out your front vision. Now, we do have a nice panoramic view. A pillars are somewhat aggressive, so keep that in mind. Although, I don't think it's really creating much of a blind spot here at this intersection. Then, taking a look at your side mirrors, they are decently sized. I can see what's behind me. Also, of course, we do have blind spot detection on this model. And taking a look out back, the rear seat headrests really aren't getting in the way at all so this is pretty great to see all around then of course you do have the second generation mercedes-benz user experience for your digital gauge cluster and infotainment system which is a bit easier to use also if you're somebody who maybe doesn't like the new infotainment system in the glc you still have the trackpad here on the gle so i think it's very user friendly for sure now getting back to the driving dynamics handling and steering is still light and very fluid typical for Mercedes-Benz. Now, one thing I have noticed though as of late with the GLC and C-Class, they're really starting to tighten up the steering a bit, really trying to resemble what you see from BMW and even Audi to a certain degree, whereas the GLE is still um, showing its weight a bit. You're still going to have some of that uh, body roll, but also the steering is just not going to be agile or aggressive like you would see in the AMG models. But this is truly a serene and comfortable driving experience that does fit the price point. This particular model is priced at around $82,000 and you get a lot of creature comforts with that, such as the heated and ventilated seats, also heated and cooled cup holders. So you're getting a lot of those features that you might not find on some rivals. Now, just like vehicles such as the Genesis GV80 or BMW X5, I think the Mercedes-Benz GLE does lean more towards being sophisticated and premium compared to what we see from other mainstream manufacturers in this price range and market, where just the way the interior is laid out, the way it wraps around you, but also even just the styling and the way Mercedes-Benz crafted the interior and the exterior, it just seems like a more special vehicle compared to what we see even from an X540i. The X540i is gonna be a bit more sporty, it's gonna be, be a bit more dynamic especially with the inline six cylinder engine and if you're looking for a vehicle that compares better with that you're going to want to go with the 450. But in the first five to ten minutes of driving this vehicle around what I'm noticing is that it's smoother than it was before where the last GLE I reviewed which was the 2021 model it felt a bit lethargic it felt a bit slow for its segment and even though Mercedes-Benz hasn't changed the zero to sixty times on their website for 2024 the mild hybrid system does do quite a bit. Now, the, of course, you do get about 22 extra pound-feet of torque compared to last year, but one thing they're not really talking about is temporarily during heavier accelerations, you do get a boost of around 20 to 21 horsepower, which is gonna make a huge difference. So I have put the GLE in sport mode. Let's get on the highway here. All 
not too bad at highway speeds entering the highway. But I do notice though that the nine speed isn't as quick shifting as it is in the GLC. So still needs to work on that when it comes to the 350, but that's not something I would expect. However, I do notice that the gear shifts are a bit crisper, they're a bit smoother, and the accelerations is also a bit linear as well. You're not getting a turbo lag thanks to the 48 volt mild hybrid system. Now at highway speeds, the GLE does feel pretty composed on the roadways, even though you do have that higher center of gravity. So again, you are gonna have some of that body roll in the corners, but at least on the highway, it does feel pretty firm and secure in its lane. And as always, traffic is a bit heavy for this direction on I-95. So we're gonna turn around and do that one more time and see if we can get a bit more of an accurate testing with this vehicle. So in the corners, in sport mode, again, the steering is light, but very fluid. It's not too aggressive at all, but also you're still gonna have some confidence in the corners. Braking is relatively strong, which is great to see for an SUV of this size. And the accelerations are so much better than the last GLE I reviewed. Back on the highway, in a tighter corner, not too bad. Again, still feeling a bit of body roll here at around 35, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, the gear shifts are just a bit better than where the GLE was before. It feels quicker to respond and also another thing too, and I talked about this with Mercedes-Benz products with the nine-speed automatic a couple of years ago, that in sport mode, it just really wasn't a vehicle you'd be enjoying behind the wheel in sport mode. And Mercedes-Benz has really reworked all of that with their latest models. And from what I hear, a lot of buyers are coming in and they're really excited about the nine speed now, which is a bit interesting considering the fact that what we see from rivals with the ZF eight speed, the fact that buyers are loving the nine speed now with it being retuned, I think really goes a long way and says a lot about what Mercedes Benz is doing with their latest products. Even above highway speeds, it feels very composed and also it's pretty quiet as well. And that's what's most important. You're spending around $80,000 for a midsize SUV like this, you wanna have that feeling of being in a premium luxury vehicle, and that's exactly what you're getting here with the GLE 350. But I would like to experience the 450 because with the inline six, that would be a better comparison to the X5. But for a four cylinder, it does have a nice sound to it. Also, I think the power is more than adequate especially considering that a lot of manufacturers are starting to move towards turbocharged four-cylinder engines, whereas BMW is still holding on to the inline six and some other manufacturers still using the V6 as well. Now on some winding back roads in comfort mode, the suspension is very forgiving. You go over the bumps and imperfections and you barely feel them, which is a bit of a surprise with the larger tire size that we have on this model. Now, since the GLE 350 is really tuned for luxury first, you're not gonna have a stiffer suspension. You're not gonna have that aggressive driving dynamics where you're gonna feel compelled to maybe speed in the corners and on the twists and bends. But on a longer drive, this is a great commuter and also a great road trip vehicle where everyone should be comfortable when you are traversing roads such as this where there are some potholes and some other imperfections. But really though, this is a very comfortable and enjoyable driving experience if you are looking for luxury first. Now, one thing I do want to point out here on this model, I've never really showed you guys this in the reviews, is that you do have augmented reality. So, hey Mercedes. How can I help? Get me to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington. Round guidance to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington, 80 Cambridge Street, Burlington is starting. So as you can tell, we do have route guidance and hopefully you guys can see this on the infotainment system. So you have augmented reality where you can see what's ahead of you, also where to take a turn. You do have turn by turn navigation as well through your onboard assistant. Another thing to know as well, and you probably can't see this from the GoPro over my shoulder, is that you also have the turn by turn navigation system on your head up display as well. 
So really cool stuff here. You don't see this on a lot of rivals at all. And again, that's why you're paying extra. You're getting some of these creature comforts. You're getting some of this new technology that you're not gonna find in rivals. And I just think this is a really neat feature. I personally have not tried it in my Mercedes-Benz reviews, but I figure since it is equipped on this GLE, might as well showcase it. But also, of course, you do have your onboard assistant too. And as you can tell, very eager to help. But all in all, after this test drive and from an on-road perspective, the 48 volt mild hybrid system and the retuned nine-speed automatic transmission brings a lot to the table for this vehicle. Where I felt back in 2021, 2022, the last time I reviewed the GLE, that it was a bit lethargic and gasping for air under heavier accelerations. And also, of course, since the nine-speed really wasn't that refined, it wasn't enjoyable to drive this vehicle in sport mode. Where now for 2024, it feels a bit quicker to respond. It feels a bit more athletic, even though the suspension hasn't changed at all. But also, since you do have that additional pound feet of torque and horsepower under heavier accelerations, this vehicle just feels all around quicker and I think better overall. So if you are looking for a midsize luxury SUV that's really focusing on luxury first, but you also want to have that performance that comes along with it, take a look at the 2024 GLE. So to quickly wrap up this review, the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLE truly is a mid-cycle refresh model, where if you currently own, say, a 2021 model, you're not going to notice substantial differences or drastic changes. However, what Mercedes-Benz has incorporated to the 2024 model, I think, will go a long way where you have the new digital gauge cluster and also infotainment system, which is a bit easier to use. Also, of course, you saw the trackpad and quick access buttons, unlike what we see with the GLC. But for me, it really boils down to the 48 volt mild hybrid system and retuned nine speed automatic transmission, because that alone is a more of a stark difference compared to the last time I reviewed the GLE, where the accelerations are smoother, the performance just seems more refined for an SUV in this price range. And also, of course, since this is a 350, it's all about luxury, it's all about comfort, and that's what Mercedes-Benz is giving you with this vehicle. Now, of course, since this is the exact same generation and platform as last year, you're not gonna notice any difference when it comes to handling and cornering capabilities. But Mercedes-Benz is primarily focused on that luxury rather than being dynamic like we see with the BMW X5 40i. But I do think though that if you want a vehicle that compares more with the X5 40i, you're gonna wanna go with the 450 and hopefully I get to review that one sometime soon because I do think that the inline six is a better pairing with an SUV of this size. But if you are strictly looking at a 350, the 48 volt mild hybrid system and that Reed 2 9 speed automatic does go a long way and really makes you feel as though you're getting your money's worth for the GLE. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.